Hi there, uh, my name is Professor Morris Fallon. I'm at Oxford Robotics Institute. Today I'm going to talk to you about real time forest inventory uh, with robot, mobile robot mapping. And this is work carried out by uh, my, my collaborators, Alex, Milad, Tijusui, and Navid. Uh, we're motivated to develop a more flexible system for reconstruction and segmentation of forests. Typical approaches are to use terrestrial scanners, like you see on the right which is slow and uh, tedious. And instead, we developed this handheld system that can be orders of magnitude quicker. And it's described in the paper that's illustrated on the bottom left with some upcoming work under revision, under review at present. This is an indication, illustration of how the device can be used. It combines a computer and uh, a three-dimensional LiDAR uh, and battery power so that it's fully equipped to be used uh, with processing going on on board uh, the first step we want to do is to be able to extract individual trees from the laser scanning data. That's illustrated here. As the device has been carried through the environment, we're accurately tracking its motion by fusing this together the different sensors. But we're also extracting individual sensors or individual trees and tracking them over time. Um, from them, we're extracting individual radii. So we're using an estimation of where the ground is from the lighter scan. And then taking a slice through the environment at about one, one and a half meters. And as you can see on the right hand side with some robust uh, circle fitting, we can extract uh, uh, suitable diameters. This is an illustration of filtering down from the raw data in the top down to a representation in the bottom right that is diameters plus the individual tree instances. We verified the performance of our algorithm is similar to that achieved with a conventional approach using terrestrial laser scanning with a tripod-based scanner using this uh, scanner on the bottom left. We built a, an accurate 3D reconstruction of the environment um, illustrated in, in the lower right. So it's the same path. Uh, we measured individual trees and manually me measured their diameters and used that to uh, uh, create this plot um, comparing our estimated uh, dBH value versus that from, from individual measurement. And we typically get within about seven centimeters of the correct diameter, which is within one and a half centimeters of um, a commercial approach that uses the very accurate LiDAR reconstruction. Now, having achieved that, kind of, that reconstruction over short periods, uh, uncertainty builds up over time. So it, what you can see here is for a 2.3 kilometer run, starting here, exploring down to this forest, and then returning back to the starting location, as much as two, 25 meters of drift can occur. There's no GPS under the canopy. Um, and that means that our odometry system is, is subject to, the, to this drift. It's kind of inherent. If we were to simply bundle together the, the, the mapping from the, the black run, we would have lots of duplicate observations of the same tree. Instead, we take advantage of what's known as SLAM, simultaneous localization mapping, to detect when we've come back to the same environment and we can use that to bend and twist the map so as to keep it consistent. And at the end of our mission, we have a globally consistent map that we can save to file. This is what a large scale survey of a forest can look like. So we have many different lawnmower patterns repeating back on top of one another with these red lines illustrating where we've determined that we've been in the same place before. You can see that it's quite difficult to actually achieve that smooth uh, parallel lines that you might think would be necessary. For, for maximal efficiency. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. What you see here is a slice through the environment. You can see the individual trees segmented. And in the bottom right, you can see a measure of the performance. You can see individual trees that have been segmented and accurately reconstructed. We want to go on further than this and map multiple missions, uh, combining together a system that can scale to large forest areas. What you see here on the top right is the, a visualization of how we can create links that, that go between uh, run number one and run number two. And the way we do this is to determine when we've come back to the same location without being able to have any spatial cue. We use a, a module called Scan Context, as uh, cited on the bottom of the, of the slide, which builds a low resolution descriptor of the area around a point cloud. And we can use that to determine when we've been in the same environment. Now it works best in sparse environments, such as uh, woods and, and or roads and clearings, but it struggles in the most dense and overgrown forests. More analysis is needed to improve the performance of this module, but using that, we can create these links that join together different runs from different days, different weeks, um, and possibly over longer periods of time. 
And in doing so, we can we can create illustrations like you can see in the bottom right. This uh, visualization spans three separate experiments um, and totaling about five kilometers of walking. As you can see, it's roughly two hectares that has been um, joined together in, in about three minutes. So it takes three minutes to go through each of the missions and find locations where, we, where we've been in the same place. Um, and what you see in the bottom right or at the bottom of this plot is the combined pose graph of the three SLAM problems. Um, the red, red dashes that you can just about make out illustrate when we've recognized that we've been in the same place. And those, are, those, are, those observations are used to bend and twist the mission trajectories of the three uh, runs so as to be overall self-consistent. And to summarize what we've presented today is an online mapping system that can use a handheld laser system to in real time extract and detect uh, individual trees and their, and their DPH, their diameter, breast height. Um, it achieves competitive performance with uh, uh, existing commercial systems, but it can give real time feedback to an operator, allow, allowing them to achieve better field coverage. Our next steps are to look at scaling this system to be able to, to span larger spaces and to give us multi-run capability and also to incorporate GPS when it's available. Um, we're looking to move towards an easier to use system that um, and looking also to look at met metrics like how many hectares we can uh, scan and, uh, and filter um, uh, per unit hour. Thank you very much.